How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. This is part 10. Removing the drain taps followed by the cladding. This reveals a few errors that require attention. I intend to make some new cladding using a baking tray as I prefer it to the aluminium side panels which dent far too easily. The first thing to do is to remove all of the brass drain taps. These need fitting in place either using shim washers or some sort of a sealant that holds the drain taps in the correct position. I got some stuff from a company called Clevedon Steam a while ago and it's called SAS Nutlock and it's really good for holding fittings rigidly in one position. But unlike Loctite 603 or 638 which are high strength retaining compounds by using SAS Nutlock you can actually break the seal and start again if you get it wrong. This is going to be tricky, all of the studs come through the cladding. So I'm going to use this cladding with some modifications to be the pattern for the new stuff. A sealant has been applied underneath the cladding at key points. I think I'll scrape most of this off with the edge of a steel rule and then apply some new stuff before assembling the new cladding. This of course is the side where the drain taps fit and also the piping from the outlets to the inlets for the three cylinders. I'm temporarily removing this fitting that I made just because it's in the way and now I have to undo all these 7BA small brass dome head screws. I'm also removing the final exhaust fitting from the low pressure cylinder. This is quite simple because they are bolts and are very easy to remove using my socket driver. This is now the other side of the engine and I haven't had to trim the threads at this side from the ends of the stanchions because this particular fitting fits okay. This was not the case with the other side where all of the piping fits everything fouled and it was really difficult to get the pipes on and off so I trimmed a couple of the shafts. I will use this video as a reference so I don't mark out the new cladding in the wrong place. Making these panels for each side is not an easy job. This bit is very useful. It isn't present on all triple expansion engines. It's a small hole where you can see where the valve is. The triple expansion engine that I rebuilt that came from the USA didn't have this facility and it was much more difficult to set the valve timing. On the one that I built that I got from America, it didn't have one of these and what I had to do was make a temporary support for the valve gear I set the timing using a jig that I made for the job, then assemble the engine. But it's much better with this inspection hole. You can see just where the slide valve is relative to the position of the eccentrics. It's time now to once again remove the steam chest cover from the high pressure steam chest to make sure that the valve timing is correct. Now at least I know which way it needs to rotate relative to where the eccentrics are. That's because I can see where everything is through the inspection hole of the intermediate cylinder. I don't think the slide valve is in the right position, so I'm adjusting it. And without removing the expansion link, you have a limited number of turns at this end of the travel. And here, after adjusting the valve travel, I put it back together. The plain shank bolt is now in place through the valve fork, the die block, and I've just put the nut on the other end. Now it's time to connect some compressed air to the engine. I'm using a proper piece of airline and some Jubilee clips to hold this in place. When running a triple expansion engine on compressed air, the pressure has to be quite high, and it's too high for the silicone rubber, which was beginning to expand alarmingly. Here I'm making some fine adjustments to the eccentric sheaves. This job, by the way, on a triple expansion engine it's quite difficult and demands a lot of patience. Working with a single cylinder simple engine or even a twin cylinder simple engine is very simple. This is not. I tightened the two bolts that hold the big end brasses together and I fitted lock nuts to both of them. I really don't want these to work loose at any time. Here you can clearly see the advantage of my method for tightening eccentric sheaves onto the crankshaft. In this clip I'm rotating the crankshaft and it's not feeling quite as tight as it once did. It will however need considerable running in 
So what I'm doing is applying some oil. I already pumped some oil into the high pressure cylinder's steam chest. I'll turn up the pressure and see what happens. It seems to run quite well in this direction. I can even notch it back. I'm keeping my hand on the top of the engine to stop it moving around on the bench. When I rotate the reversing screw to put the engine in reverse, it won't go. Surprise, surprise. But it's not all bad news because the owner of the engine only wants it to go in one direction for the application. These eccentric sheaves are machined as a pair and I'm really not sure if they're accurate. Normally when I build a steam engine, whether it's a simple or a compound, what I do is machine individual eccentric sheaves which are adjustable to set the timing correctly in both directions. There's plenty of power, and don't forget at the moment, this is only the high pressure and the intermediate cylinder that's working. The low pressure is not connected, and there's plenty of power. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.